I've just installed all 12 sponge filters in the top row of tanks. It took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, there's a lot of fiddling around, like taking the lights down, obviously the lids, washing the sponges out, actually even just unpacking the sponge filters. The hardest thing though was getting that airline hose onto each sponge filter. It takes them quite a bit of time and I had to use the heat gun in the end and that just helped stretch that airline hose just a little bit wider and um, fit it onto the attachment that's on the sponge filter. So those are all cycling now, the tanks are all cycling. The tanks have been cycling off the sun for about a week now, so it's going really well. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about today is these 90 degree elbows. These are going to go on each turn, all the tanks, there's 20 of them, and um, they're not going to be attached with PVC cement, they're just going to be held there in friction, and they're going to pretty much sit like that in the aquarium. Now the problem with these is that they're white. Generally when you buy PVC from anywhere, uh, it's going to come white and I've got black backgrounds on these tanks so I like to, I don't want to see any equipment in these tanks like I said in uh, a couple of my videos so far. So I spray painted them black. So I'll briefly talk to you about a uh, product that I use to spray paint them black. It's aquarium safe that you can use um, and I've done that to all 20 90 degree elbows. I'll also explain to you guys how I painted them. Um, you know, nice and evenly, because it can take quite a while if you're just painting one at a time, you know, like you're going to hold on your finger or something, but I'll explain to you how I did that. So here's the product here. It's made by a company called Krylon, and it's uh, called Fusion for Plastic. This is black, obviously, and it doesn't require any sanding or priming of the PVC, so you just spray it on and let it um, cure. So you, when you're applying it, you've got to shake the can in for about one or two minutes, and then from about eight inches away, just spray evenly on the PVC pipe and it should be touched dry in about 15 minutes and then you can um, handle it within an hour, depending on how heavy you've sprayed the pipe. The pipe. So what I did was basically I got an airline hose, attached it to a clothesline and just strung each one through the airline hose, strung each elbow through the airline hose so they're kind of like hanging off the airline like Christmas decorations and then spray them. Spray one side, spray it underneath, spray it above, spray it on the other side, and let them dry. They would dry within an hour, obviously, but I let them, I let them stay outside for all day, basically, until the night when I brought them inside. And then I let them harden, or cure, for, for a week on that airline hose. Then I took them off the airline hose, and obviously, in the pipe, there's gonna be a little white mark that the spray didn't hit because the airline hose was covering it. So I then just sat them on a box in the garden and just sprayed the inside nice and evenly, left them out there for a couple of hours, brought them back inside and let them harden or cure for another week. So all up it's taken about two weeks to do all these 20, uh, 20, 90 degree elbows. But now they're ready to go on the tanks. And guys, you can probably notice the sand in these tanks now. Uh, it's been in there for about a week. I still need to buy another six bags of sand. I've decided it's going to be six bags. Um, for these two 42 2 tanks. So each of these tanks has one 20 kilo bag of sand in it. Nice and even, nice um, footprint for you guys to know. If you're going to buy that uh, type of pool filter sand, the 20 kilo one, um, made by Unicorn, you'll know the footprint size. Two foot by two foot back. So it's about an inch deep. As you can see, there's a bit of a hill in the middle from where I've tried to, you know, flatten it all out and we'll get a job of that today. And uh, so in here it's given me an idea, I'll probably need about three bags each um, for each four footer because I want the, the sand bed just to be a little bit deeper than that than is going to be in these tanks because I'm going to have larger rocks in the four footers obviously. Let's go cracking off, start popping on these 90 degree elbows onto all the tanks and um, we'll see how it changes the flow in the aquarium because at the moment all the water's coming straight down in each corner of the tanks. It's not actually flowing into the tank, into the middle of the tank to get a better, better circulation of that water flow. So this, is, um, this will help that. And hopefully you won't be able to see them as easily because they're now spray painted black. And here's how the flow looks in all the tanks at the moment. No 90 degree elbow pointing outwards to the middle of the tank. So the water's just popping straight in and going down into the water column. Right here guys, so if you've been following along on my channel for a while now, you'll notice that this pump here is powering the two four-footers on the bottom row and the six two-foot cubes on the middle row. So 
What I'm going to do now to attach those 90 degree elbows, rather than trying to put them on while the water's flowing out, I'm just going to press the pause button on the controller. This will go into a feed mode that will stop water going through the uh, lower tanks. That will allow me to put the 90 degree elbows on without getting splashed. So what it does, that feed mode, it stays enabled for about 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minutes is up, it will return to the previous wattage it was set at before it was uh, put into feed mode. So it stays like that for approximately 10 minutes. So you can hear the room's a bit uh, more quieter now because there's not as much water flying back to the sump. And anyway, here we go. Let's hope, hopefully, this will work. And I can put those elbows on without dropping them in the tank. So that's great. That's one down, that didn't work. I'll have to get that out later. <laughs> Far out. Let's see if this one goes on. Yeah, that's a bit better. So that one's on, kind of, yeah, you can't see it at all really at all in the tank, that's awesome. So that's on there, nice tight fit. I'll get that other one out in a, in a sec. So here you can see what the elbows look like on in the tank. The water levels obviously dropped down since I put the pump into feed mode. But I'll put the pump back on now. I'll just unpause it and you'll see the difference. So here's one of the 90 degree elbows in one of my 4x2x2 tanks. I've had to increase the brightness. You can actually see the lens and me holding the camera so you can see the return pipe. But it is pretty, pretty good uh, that, you know, you can't see it that well. If I zoom out, you'll see how bright I've actually made the camera. Uh, I'll try and make it so the exposure level's the same as what I'm seeing. That's about, that's almost about right there. Uh, you really have to look hard to, to see the, the return pipe in the tank. So guys, I thought I'd bring you up to the top row of tanks. So you can, one, see them from up this step at this vantage point, and also hear the sound. So that's all the water trickling in into the tanks from the returns without the last 90 degree elbows on. And I just want to show you how much quieter it is in this room once all those elbows are on. So all 20 elbows are on the tanks. One thing I've noticed, the noise level. It's dropped significantly. I really wasn't expecting that. Now you have the splashing of water of 20 tanks from those returns. And now effectively, they've all been silenced. So adding these 90 degree elbows to the tanks, I highly recommend it. There's been four benefits to adding these elbows to the tanks. One, I can no longer see the plumbing in the tank. It was white, or well, it's catching your eye straight away as you look at the tank because of the black background that stood out. Now they're black, they're almost invisible. Two, circulation's improved. The water's coming out, um, and dropping straight down into the tanks. Three, it's a directional flow. I can change the flow angle as I wish. If I want it more in towards the middle or to, more towards the side, I can change that. And four, the one I wasn't expecting, and what I'm harping on about, the noise level. I'm really, really happy about it. 
wasn't expecting it at all, um, and it's a happy coincidence. So the noise that you can hear, obviously, is the water draining into these horizontal drain lines. The sump is the main noise, really. The water flowing into the sump and splashing around in the sump. And lastly, this hang on the backfield is making a little bit of a splashing noise, but that won't be there for much longer. So yeah, guys, I highly recommend if you're doing this sort of setup in a fish room, that your returns have an elbow, so you're getting better circulation, it's more directional. Don't PVC cement that elbow to that to the to the drain, uh, to the returns, so you can still move it as you wish and uh, clean it for maintenance if you need to. And yeah, paint them, paint them black if you don't want that, don't want to see them because yeah, they were they were catching my eye um, before, but now they're pretty much invisible. Anyway, guys, the rest of the day now. I'm going to start adding in rocks and decorating these tanks. So I might show you the progress of that in a later video. But anyway, guys, I think that's it for this video for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And give me a like, thumbs up, comment on anything uh, you think I could improve on or should change or what you're liking that I'm doing. But yeah, anyway, guys, I'll wrap it up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.